Hi there, welcome to this course on NLP, Natural Language Processing with AWS. My name is Pranjal and I'm your instructor for this class. In this course, you are going to learn about NLP and how you can implement different NLP tasks with AWS using various AWS services such as AWS Comprehend, Translate, Tesseract, Transcribe, Poly, and much more. NLP is one of the popular domain in artificial intelligence that helps machine to understand, interpret, manipulate, respond to the human languages. NLP processes the natural languages by combining statistical, machine learning, and deep learning models and derive meaningful information from it. AWS offers services like Comprehend, through which we can identify the language of the text, extract key phrases, do sentiment analysis, word classification, and much more. Then we have AWS Translate, through which we will be able to translate one language to another language. Then AWS Transcribe, speech to text services. Then Poly, text to speech services. These are all things you are going to learn in this course. If you are curious to learn more about NLP with AWS, then enroll this course right now. Hi there, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you are going to learn how you can create simple web application with the help of Flask. So Flask basically is a Python web framework through which you can create web application very easily and very quickly. And the first thing which you must have is to install this Flask library either you are using the python environment or any other things you must install it into your workplace and then you need to import it into your main python file and once you have the flask you need to initiate the app instance for your application and here you need to add some decorators as you can see i have added the decorator for routing our base url of our web application so here i'm going to define one of the function here so whenever i'm going to hit this particular base url of my web application then it will going to run this function which is index here and here it will going to return the html page which i'm going to attach it to it later on okay meanwhile i'm going to add some more things into my web application this is simple python web application i'm not adding so much options here and uh, to connect with any html page you need to use the random template option and at last you need to write app.run to run your application and uh, here i have give the, given the parameter for debug which is true here and you can see the beauty of using ide i just created web html page within a clicks and here i'm just going to add some body to my web application and yep so I have created a simple web application which is rendering the index.html and returning that particular page. So this is how you can simply create the Python web application with the help of Flask. Now the thing is which we are doing here is to create the machine learning project. Okay, so here I'm going to add some of the options into my web page. And as you can see, I have changed the title as well, which is machine learning with AWS. And here I am focusing on the NLP. NLP, you might be familiar with this term, which is very hot topic in the field of machine learning, which simply means natural language processing. So here we're going to process the natural languages. And the natural languages can be anything from text to the spoken words. And here I'm focused on this text okay so here what I'm going to do that here any user any end user will going to pass and text to our through our web application then with the help of AWS machine learning we're going to analyze that particular text and return the result accordingly so here the only focus is on the NLP thing okay in NLP you can have options like you can translate any language from one language to another languages then you can extract some sentiments from it that the, the statement which is given by the user is positive sentiment or it is a negative sentiment or a neutral one so there will be lots of options which we can do here like we're going to also identify the pause which is part of speech that which word is uh, noun which word is pronoun and lots of other things which is also application of nlp here 
So as you can see there, I have created a simple web application where you can pass your text there. And here, I'm going to add some more thing like select. With the help of select, I can give some options to the user that if you want to select this language or that language, then the input text will be translated into that particular language. So the very first application of NLP which I'm going to perform here is the translation of the language. Okay, how the Google Translate work? That's a, another thing. But here, with the help of AWS Machine Learning Services, I'm going to translate the input text into that required translated language so this is all about the aws machine learning and here we're going to discuss on various services of aws machine learning which are related to the text part okay so i've added some of the languages here you can see like sp spanish french then portuguese and uh, other than english english is a global language other than it these three languages are very much popular and one more language i think we should give here um, which is turkish here so these are the languages which are popular in the europe and that's all so as you can see that we got some options here in our web application in the next part we're going to add some more things into our web application for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated Hey friend, welcome back. In my previous lesson, I'm showing you that how you can create a simple web application with the help of Flask. And here, I'm going to add some more things into my web application before jumping into the main NLP task. Okay, an NLP task can be your text summarization, your spam detection, sentiment analysis, then part of speech tagging, then name entity recognition, and various other things will be come inside this NLP task with the help of them you can detect the spam you can do machine translation you can add them into your virtual agents or chatbots and do some text summarizations and various other things you can do with it so here we're going to implement this NLP task and various other NLP application so let's do it so before moving towards this particular task we're going to add some things into our web application so here I have created another decorator and here I am passing two methods one is get and the other one is post okay and here now it will going to work this function will going to work when we are going to give some input to that particular input box which we have added into our HTML page so we need to get the things from that particular box here and then the real things will be going to begin so here we're going to select the selected language from that select pane okay and here you can see the id which i have passed here i'm going to use the same thing there as well so you need to first collect gather all of the information which are given by your end user okay and once you have any user you can start your process now suppose if your selected language is not none then what will going to do okay so here i have given uh, another variable lang which contains the selected lang which which is selected by your end user okay and uh, here i think we should return the selected language okay let us check that this function is working fine or not so here i'm again rendering this index.html page our result will be come goes to this particular html page and here i'm passing these two variables one is input which contains the input text and other one is language which contains the selected language and here what i need to do here is to add that particular python variables into our web page if you're new to this flask world how to create the web application with flask you must be knowing all of the things because these are some of the basic things which you know while creating application with flask 
so here I have added this selected language and to particular print your Python variable you need to use these two curly braces so let us see that how this application is working fine or not you can see that there are two things is coming like input and the select languages now I'm going to do submit you can see that we got the input we got the selected languages now the thing is we need the translated language so to use that particular thing to translate our input text will require the boto library okay and uh, here I'm going to create a new file which is translate file which will going to contain the function for translating your language okay actually I'm not going to add all the function into one main.py it will look a little bit complex it's better to add new Python scripts and adding new functions into it okay so that you will only focus on that particular functionality okay so here I'm going to import this translate and here you need to just write star asterisk which means all of the things of the translate Python file that's all See you in the next class. All right. Now in this part, I'm going to create the translate function for our web application. So before jumping into it, you must have the Boto3 installed into your virtual environment. Basically, this Boto3 is the AWS SDK for Python. With the help of Boto3, you can easily integrate your Python application with the AWS services. Not only machine learning services, you can integrate any AWS services within your application with the help of this Boto3. So here is our first function, our first task, which is the translation of any language from given language, okay? So here, one more thing is required, which is AWS CLI, okay? So you must configure your AWS CLI with access token, with whatever IAM rule you are using, okay? It is very easy okay you can easily create that access token for using this AWS CLI now once you have configured your AWS CLI and install the Boto3 now the next part is very very easy okay so here you can see I've creating this definition translate file here I have in initialized that this particular service I want to use here and you need to give the name the reason name as well okay which is very much required then once you have initialized the instance for your translate now you need to use this translate instance to do its job so translate dot translate underscore text this is one of the function which comes inside the boto3 library okay now here I'm passing the text which is our input here so just write input so and this the source language will be the English okay and uh, the target language will be the selected language which is selected by any user using our web application so just write before uh, adding this translate function into my web application, let us check that this function is working fine or not. Okay. So in the target language, I've added ES, which is the language code for Spanish language. So it will going to return the result. And here I'm just passing uh, the text here, which is a kind of input here. Okay. And uh, you need to call this particular function that do translate and here you need to pass this text variable and then you need to write the translated text okay so let me reformat the file now let us run this particular python script which having this translate function okay we got some error here so let us figure it out that what happened and why we got this error okay we got that so let us rerun this 
particular program and you can see that we got the translated text which is hola okay hola monde i don't know that i have pronounced it correctly or not but yes this is how you can simply translate your english literals into the spanish literals I, here i'm just want to have this translated text this result is basically in the form of json and here the only required field is the translated text so i'm just gathering this translated text content and you can see we got that so now we're going to pass this translated text into our web application and later on it will going to reflect into web application okay and that's all we're going to do this in the next part so for now keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hey friend welcome back in my previous lesson i've shown you that how you can create simple translate function with this you can easily translate one language to another language with the help of aws machine learning service which is translate okay so now I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm going to add these all things into main.py, our main Python file, the engine for this web application. And here you need to call that particular function which we have created. And here you need to pass the input text, your selected language. But before doing this, we need to do comment all the stuffs which we have added below and uh, we need to pass another parameter which is translate here and here i'm going to add another thing which is translated text and within the two color braces you need to add that translated text parameter so this is how you can simply create the web application which will going to translate things for you just like a Google Translate, now you have your own application to translate the things. If you want to add some more languages, you can check the AWS official doc where you can get the languages code. Okay, and you can see that our translated one is working fine. So let me write some more things like it's raining. And here I have selected that particular language and we got the translated text. I'm not going to pronounce it because I don't think that accent for that particular language I'm going to create properly. And this is for French. You can add as many as language. Okay. Let me show you. AWS translate. language codes okay here is a translated text and uh, here you can get the language code where it is let me show you applied technologies something so that they will have yeah it, this is the page which you can bookmark it and you can get all the language code which you want to add into your web application so that's cool you can use each of them and make your own translator web application that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated all right in previous lesson you have learned that how you can create your own translate web application with using Boto3 and AWS Machine Learning Service, which is Translate. Now, in this part, we're going to do some another NLP task, which is sentiment analysis. So, we do need this sentiment analysis because you can get the emotional tone from the piece of text, like the, whether the sentence is positive, negative, or neutral. With the help of sentiment analysis, you can apply into various applications like you can get the sentiment of any movie like that particular movie is good blockbuster or a bad movie okay you can get some reviews for 
your product okay that particular product is awesome or that particular product have any kind of defect and various other things you can get from the sentiment analysis generally the sentiment analysis is very useful in terms of marketing like you have any product and you have launched it and you got some reviews and with particular review you can decide that there is a positive sentiment of your audience of your customer or it is a negative if it is a negative then why it is a negative you can resolve that thing that defect and with improvement you can increase the sale of your particular product your movies and various other things so sentiment analysis is i think one of the most important application from nlp okay and uh, here i'm going to create the sentiment analysis function just like previous thing i've created a translate function here i'm going to create a sentiment analysis function and here i'm using the comprehend service this comprehend aws machine learning service you can get some sentiments from the piece of text with the help of comprehend you can also get the entity pause and various other things generally it is used for nlp things okay now let us check that this function is working fine or not so just write sentiment here and uh, that's all i think we should give a another piece of text here like thank you for everything because you have enrolled this course so a thanks from my side if you're learning something from this lesson okay so you can see here that this is a kind of positive sentence so we got the positive and here you will get some of the numbers the percentage okay that at what level that particular sentence is positive or negative or neutral okay or it is a mixed one so if the number of the positive will be high then you can say that particular piece of text is a positive one okay so now the thing is we need to extract the only thing which you require from this text okay we don't require this whole json file we only require some of the fields so we are going to figure out that how you can extract the required thing okay so it comes under this sentiment score field and you can just write positive here to extract this value So, in the same way, you need to do with other sentiments as well for negative and the neutral. So, basically, according to me, sentiment will not be a count in terms of three parameters like positive, negative, neutral. For me, if any sentence, if anything, in if you got some review and with the help of sentiment analysis you got that it is a negative one so don't think it as a negative sentiment that particular negative sentiment review contains two things either it could be the critic or it could be the suggestion or advice okay if it is a critic then you need to do some improvement on that particular thing which is required okay if you got some defects in your particular product you need to fix it okay that's genuine and some negative um, sentiments could be the suggestion like you can do this if you're going to try this into your application then it will going to work fine suppose you have created one of your application and it crashed a lot of time okay so it could be count as a critics that your app is crashing frequently or you can 
take it as a suggestion that your app is crashing after some XYZ update. So it could be a suggestion, it could be a advice, and it could be a critic. In all terms, it is actually improving your application. So the point is here that don't take a sentiment as a negative sentiment and you will be in regret feeling that what happened to our application. Don't think like that. Okay. So take it as a positive thing. Negative sentiment is basically a positive thing for your application. Okay. And neutral, I don't think so that neutral will going to give something for you. It could be a advice or suggestion and very low way okay the positive one could be your got some compliment for your application for your end product or it could be any suggestion advice as well okay the suggestion advice will be on all three factors positive negative and neutral okay so that's all that's my thinking about sentiment analysis we're going to run this application in the next lesson so for now keep so let's get down the business in this lesson I'm going to show you that how our application will work okay that how it will going to give the sentiment of the piece of code so you got the point which I've told you in my previous lesson that the, the way of thinking from the sentiment things it could be categorized into the four forms not in the three forms it could be suggestion it could be advice it could be compliment it could be the critics not in these three parameters which is positive neutral and negative okay we are doing this because with the help of this amazon comprehend you can get these three parameters very easily and after it you need to customize your machine learning model so that you can get a good analysis about your any review about any any other thing so let us write something here like hello Pranjul thank you so you can see that the sentiment which is here is 76 which is a positive sentence okay another thing is we need to pass the the score okay let me write sentiment zero one and neutral because i've created the list and this list contains all the sentiments basically all three sentiments now the thing is i need to pause it here pause equal to pause neg equal to negative new neutral equal to neutral and you need to add these three parameters in your web page as well instead of writing this the sentiment score i'm going to write in that way okay sentiment score for positive sentiment score for negative positive score negative score and the neutral okay and here you need to write boss new next sorry neg and new here so let us see that it will going to work fine or not so this is our application and here hello pranjul thank you for your patience and submit it so you can see that before we got the sentiment score in the form of list but after it we got the number the value for particular sentiment okay the score that's all this is the way you can create the sentiment analysis web application with the help of aws machine learning service which is compre comprehend here that's all keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated now here it comes another application on nlp which is pause tagging pause simply means part of speech back in our school time we have learned lot all about part of speech which indicates the function of any word 
that what it mean in that sentence it can be a noun it can be pronoun it can be verb adverb article adjective prepositions conjunction interjections and various other things it can be any of them so with the help of this pause we could be able to classify the world okay and here you can see that I did the same process which I did earlier. Here I have created a new Python script which contains a function which will going to detect the pass. Okay. And here I have used this detect pass. Okay. Detect syntax a function which comes under Boto3. And here comes the JSON format output for this particular sentence. Thank you for everything. So with the help of pause tagging, you can actually do some classification of words inside your sentence. And why do we need this pause is like to create an application on NER, which simply means named entity recognition, through which you can actually classify different words into terms of entity. Okay, you actually recognizing the entity from the sentence. Now you can see like for Washington, Washington it can be a name for a place or it can be named for any person as a surname like Seattle Washington is a geolocation whereas George Washington is the name of a person. So with the help of pause tagging we will be actually get the real meaning of the sentence and this is very much required that NLP does okay so now we got now I'm totally focused on this some required field from JSON like part of speech thing okay so I'm just collecting the things from this JSON so that the output which will going to come will be in the form which I wanted to have okay meanwhile let me give you one more example of this pause tagging Actually, this pause tagging is one of the fundamental tasks of natural language processing. And with the help of this pause tagging, you can do one more important task, which is words sense disambiguation. Words often occur in different sense as different part of speech. For example, like see show a beer. And here beer is a noun. And another example is like your efforts will bear fruit. And here beer is for noun I'm sorry not for noun it here it is for verb so I'm using the same word beer but there is totally different meaning okay and here it's rule come the pause tagging thing okay so with the help of pause tagging you can also do classification of word create any R or do some this word sense disambiguation and various other things with the help of this pause tagging. And meanwhile, we require this NLP to put it into our chatbots or agents, so they must understand those sentences which is coming to them. Okay, so that they can respond accordingly. If it, they do not understand whatever input is giving to them, the chatbots then they could not understand and they cannot give a proper response so it is very much required here as it is a one of the task of NLP one of the tasks I've discussed it is sentiment analysis which is another important task of NLP then translation and various other tasks are there and here this is the another task which I have discussed in this lesson now here you can see we got some um, part of speech here like verb pronoun adjective and then pronoun okay now I'm going to put this into my main application okay so just write um, pause here okay and here I'm going to create an another instance for this particular thing and just write detect pause the function which we have created 
and here you need to put this input okay and here we'll be getting the things and as a parameter i'm going to pass to that html page okay i think it, it will do the thing in the right way which let me write part of speech and change it over here as well now let me open the index.html and where we can actually going to call that particular variable so as there are many part of speeches there so it's better to use this for loop here to mention each of them okay just write percent and person at the beginning at the very end of each statement okay and here i am actually creating the unordered list and inside it i am going to list my all the items the key which will be our the word and the part of speech is will, will be the value of that key because i have created the dictionary and i am calling that particular dictionary from here and let us check it out that it's working fine or not so in this way you can create the for loop inside your index.html okay let me run this particular thing and here i'm going to give an input text hello crandall thanks for your patience and here you can see that hello is injective crandall is proper noun so this is in this way you can create the application okay uh, I've created another application here. Let me do some more things like here. I'm going to add this header tag so that part of speech will be easily available. And see, so you can see here that we got some punctuation as well noun, pronoun, noun. Okay, so this is how you can easily create a different NLP task with the help of Flask and the Boto library. I think this. Uh, this Boto 3 is actually making our task much easier, isn't it? So, I love to use this Boto 3. Well, that's for now. So, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. Hello, friend, and welcome back. In this lesson, you are going to learn that how you can recognize the entities from a piece of text. Previously, we have done a lot of NLP tasks like translating, sentiment analysis, and then part of speech. Now in this, we're going to figure out that how you can recognize the named entity. The named entity can be the person, it can be location, organization, time, and much other things, okay? Previously in part of speech, where we do some syntax analysis, through which you can able to find out that particular word is related to which part of speech it can be pronoun verb adjective punctuation marks proper noun and so on things so here we are focusing on the named entity so here you need to use this particular function which i have added which is detect entities and here you need to pass two parameters which is one which is input and other one is language okay so let us do some trial and here i have added a string where it is written thank you for everything and here it will going to detect the entities from this and here you can see that it is somehow empty because here I don't think so that there is any named entity is there in this particular string okay so I think we should give uh, another we should give another example okay so instead of using this particular sentence we're going to use this sentence hello Pranjal thanks for your patience and here you can find that the which is my name here 
it is a person named entity you can see here inside this type field so now we got the json format result now we're going to extract this particular thing from the json and put it into our web application so once again we will going to use this for loop and instead of syntax you need to put entities here and here i'm going to use two list once again and here one list will be to contain the text which is pranjal here and the other list will be going to contain the type of this named entity which is person here here you can see we got only one entity in this set of sentence so i could directly use that particular thing but instead of that i have used the follow because we can have a lots of sentence which will contain more than one entities that's why there is need of for loop okay now if we're going to return this particular dictionary this dictionary is just the combination of the two lists okay the columns is one column is the value and the other one is the key okay okay we got some error which is indentation problem is there so let us fix this particular problem and this this is just because we have extra space between their entity dictionary okay so we got our dictionary in response and here you can see we have text which is crunchel and the entity which is person here now we're going to add this particular thing into my web application just write detected entities and here you need to give that particular for loop as well and you need to call that particular function and just going to write entities then write detect entities you need to import this thing as well this python script here just write from entity import asterisk okay now you can see we can easily call this particular function and you need to pass the this entity parameter through this return okay and here you need to add that particular thing there okay entities now let us write a sentence here and you can see that we got the result pranjal then the person is there in later series we're going to add some more features into our web application till then keep learning keep exploring all right till now we have performed multiple nlp tasks in this particular lesson you are going to learn another aws services which is amazon transcribe through which you can easily convert speech into text this kind of services are very helpful when you are dealing with media files which can be audio or video and uh, this is very helpful because you cannot index your audio or video okay you need a text so that you can easily index them so what will going to happen that your audio file will going to convert into the text format and that text format will going to create an index for that particular file and if you want to search for that particular file you can easily access them so this is the one of the use case of using this amazon transcribe other than it you can use it for your business insights as well like uh, you might be here that common um, statement which you, whenever you're going to communicate with any customer care services like this call is being recorded for quality and service so you might be hear this common phrase and uh, the benefit which this organization having is like they are easily monitor their employees that they are delivering the best customer services or not so this is one another use case of this amazon transcribe now you can see that i have added some of html tags into my index.html and what will going to happen is like 
you need to give a audio file or you can give a video file and that particular file is going to be uh, convert into a text format okay so you can see we have a uh, option let me show you okay we got some error here okay okay that that error occurred because we didn't give it a link here so let me create a function for it so that whenever we're going to click that particular button then it will going to redirect to that particular method okay so here i'm going to create a new route and here i'm going to define a new function as well which is upload here and uh, here i am going to write this upload okay and uh, here what i can do here is to restrain the file name whatever it's going to be added okay so first of all we need to check that the method which is uh, here is like post or get okay now once the request method is post then you can proceed to the next step which is to get the name of that particular file okay and uh, at last you need to just simply print that particular file okay so just write print and f okay so in this way we have created a simple a uh, function okay now let me refresh this file again okay we got error again which means that we have some problem in right okay let us read on this program now you can see we got some options like choose file to be uploaded and yeah this is not going to work because we the it will not going to return uh, anything okay that function just simply print down that particular file name that error, uh, error occur because we didn't have any return okay now let us add some more things into this upload section like uh, that particular file is going to be uploaded to the s3 bucket okay and from there this s3 bucket the where your audio file is going to be decide and then you need to create a transcription job and it will going to look for that particular file which is inside the s3 bucket okay and then it will going to return the text okay so here you need to import some of the important libraries which is required in order to upload your file to the s3 bucket so you need to give the name of your bucket okay and you need to give the name of your file as well okay let me define a function okay upload file to s3 then colon okay so here we need to again use that photo 3 and that, that client one thing so that you can easily create a session so that you can upload whatever thing you want to upload into s3 bucket okay so let us take the name of file and this secure file name is very much required because it is going to collect the name your file okay and this what what going to happen actually that whenever you're going to upload it will going to create a copy in your running directory okay it is not going to upload it to the s3 bucket it will also going to create that copy in your local directory where your this program is running okay now just write photos dot uh, last client equal to go to three dot client and here instead of comprehend we require that s3 okay so either you can write simply s3 or if you need want to add that particular service name reason you can also add that also okay and here i'm going to use function which comes under this boto which is upload here and here you need to give the name of your file and the bucket name and the file name which you want to save into the s3 bucket so i'm keeping the name same okay so it will going to return the file name and that particular file name going to be accessed by 
that transcription job which we're going to add it later on so here i think this we need to add that particular function so that we can upload things to s3 okay and uh, now let us call that particular function here which is upload to s3 okay so here you need to just write file name equal to open that particular python script copy this function name and here you need to pass f okay and here i'm going to import that python script and import asterisk now you can see that error has been gone okay now it will going to upload your file into s3 and here i'm going to return the file name uh here let me do one more thing like it it is a single page application so it will going to render the same html page and here i'm going to pass this particular parameter which is file name here and once it, that particular file is going to be uploaded into s3 then the name of that particular file will going to list inside our web application so here just like uploaded file and instead of input just write down file name okay that's it so we i don't think so that we left anything around now let us copy the name like this sample 007 because it is a public bucket i've already removed all that block things so we can easily access that particular s3 file i have given the name for my s3 bucket here and uh, let us read on this particular program and just write choose file that this is the um, mp3 and just write some bit okay this s3 object has no attribute upload okay so it may be upload file so these are the mistakes which i generally do in terms of writing the syntax it doesn't matter that you need to muggle all of the things it happens okay and uh, you can easily learn by doing it again and again okay so where i have added that upload thing okay not here this is the main.py that might be inside that upload.py let me see that we got any other error as well or not so there is only one error so let's write underscore file okay after upload now just submit your particular file and let us check it out that that particular file is yeah it is now there in this s3 bucket so this function is now working fine okay that's all keep learning keep exploring hi and welcome back friend in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can upload the content into s3 bucket using boto3 and i have also added them into my web application as well now in this part we're going to create the function for transcript so aws transcribe is a speech to text solution which is provided by amazon web services through which we can convert the audio into text very quickly very easily with accuracy now this aws transcribe is under the hood using a deep learning process which is known as asr automatic speech recognition and that's the thing that is converting your audio into the text okay so this is the deep learning model which is behind this aws transcribe you don't need to create a model for it all the things is done by it okay now here you need to initiate the instance for transcribe just like other services you need to just write moto3.client then you need to give the name of your service and here i'm using this access key id secret access key id as well it is not necessary to put here but in order if you want to run this transcript script on other platform as well like heroku or digital ocean then it will going to work effectively okay or if you're not going to put this thing 
then also it's going to work because I have already configured my AWS CLI with this credentials okay now the thing is to create a transcript job okay now you can create this transcript job using AWS management console but here I'm going to create it using this Python script and you need to put down that particular input file as well the audio file which is required here because we, we need to give the input so that this transcript job will going to convert that audio file into the text okay so here I have already uploaded that particular file into s3 now the thing is here I have given the sample URL okay and uh, if you want to add that uh, custom URL we're going to do so afterwards okay so first of all I'm going to check that this particular Python script is working fine or not so let us start this transcribe job and here you need to pass the transcribe job name the job URL and uh, the format the input file which you are putting inside it you need to pass that particular format and uh, the spoken language which is used inside that input file here I have taken the input using AWS poly poly is like to convert your text into the speech so I have added the text up there and it converted our text into the audio file then I have downloaded that audio file then again uploaded into S3 bucket and from there I'm going to reprocess that input file to convert back into my text okay so here I'm just doing this uh, cycle process cyclic process I have given the text convert into audio and then I'm going to convert that particular audio to the text which I have written down okay so it's a cyclic process there so I think uh, we have given all the basic parameters up there this is not sufficient uh, but it is sufficient in order to just run a simple transcription job okay you can see that these are uh, the parameters which you can pass through inside this star transcript job but we got this error and uh, I think everything is fine I have the, the transcription job name the language code is there okay I have forgot to add this key ID and the success I'm oh, sorry the secret key let us add them as well so, so I have added that particular thing up there and uh, let us see that this will going to work or fine or not so this as you can see these are different language codes are available up there now Okay, I'm going to open this AWS transcribe and let us check that it created the job or not as you can see that it created the job and also it completed the process as well and this is the text of my input file now let us print that particular input file text into this command prompt into my this ID command prompt so just write transcribe dot get transcription job details this and paste it over here okay there is problem between braces I think so okay now that's fine now let us read on this particular program okay we got this error because that job name is already exist so we need to change the name of my job okay either you can delete this particular job or you can just change the name so I'm just going to give job one here okay you can see here it is in the in progress okay that's why the string is not there so I think we should put some time there so that it will going to complete the process and then we're going to have that string so that's all I'm going to complete the process afterwards in the next lesson so in my previous lesson I have shown you that how you can create the transcription job now 
here I have added the timestamp as well which is you can see time.sleep30 so what will going to happen it will going to start this transcription job and then it will going to wait for 30 seconds then it will going to print the result of that particular job so you can see the status is in progress let us refresh this particular page and it is now updated to complete and here you can see the status is same okay but still the process is running this time stamp is not completed okay now it is also completed and we have the result and you can find here the transcription status is completed here so here we will going to have language code and so on things the input file url and here is the output so the output is in the form of json you can see let us click that url so this is the output file which we got and here you can see the transcript which is hi my name is matthew i will read any text you type here so in this way we're going to have the output whenever we're going to run the transcription job okay so here you will going to have a lot of information related to transcript the pronunciation that the timestamp for that particular word and so on things so that's all here i have shown you the the format of output and now the thing is we need that particular string to print into our web application which i'm going to show you in the next lesson Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated. Hi, and welcome back, friend. In my previous lesson, I have shown you the output which we got after running the transcription job. Okay, now the task is to extract that particular string from that JSON file and to have it here. Okay, and also we're going to create a proper function. Okay, we have a of script but it is not a function up there we need a function so that we can put down into my web application then we can get that particular string okay now i have changed the mode to the dark mode to the chrome okay because i love the dark things <laughs> okay so here you can see this is the output which we got and uh, you can see there is a url through which we will be able to crack that json file okay so here you know, i'm going to add that this output here transcription job if you already familiar with json you can easily fetch this particular field okay so we have transcription job the first field name then in the nested form we have uh, we have we have we have this transcript let's write transcript here and write down this file name as well this file url okay and i'm going to copy this particular thing because the next job the next step is to get the string from this json file so this is a kind of request you can see so i'm going to open this url and uh, then going to get that particular thing okay just write data json equal to json dot load because this is in the form of json and it will going to read that particular file and uh, here i'm going to print this data json okay afterward we're going to look for the field inside that json okay okay we need to wait for 30 seconds because we have added the timestamp okay so we got the result you can see we got the result which is inside the json file as well you can see we get got this hi my name is matthew thing now it is inside this result field okay then transcript so just write down this text equal to data json then the field name which is result then transcript and then again transcript okay I don't think so we require anything else here let us check it out that it is working fine or not okay here you need to put zero as well because it is only thing okay let us check that it is working fine or not 
and meanwhile i'm going to add here the okay just write text here and here i'm going to write the text here instead of file name okay where is this text where is the text this is the content of the json okay we have forgotten to write down this text here so leave that uh, we don't got any error so that means it's working fine so just write down text here and here you need to call that particular function which we're going to create right now so here just write here um we need to add this function definition do transcript and we need to do little bit shift okay to put inside this particular function i don't think so we require to print all this content but leave this part we're going to do some edit afterwards and we need to return the text here okay and uh, i have reformatted the file call this function to, to transcribe put the file name here and uh, and 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 you need to add this transcript python file as well okay now everything is fine we have added all of the things okay we need to put the file name here as well file name equal to file name and 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 then you need to um replace this input.mp3 with this uh, file name okay so now you can transcribe any audio file okay you need to just upload it into s3 bucket and then it will going to the job for you okay i don't think so we need to add anything else just write file name okay and everything looks great so in the next lesson we're going to show the demo of this particular application till then keep learning keep exploring hi there welcome back in this lesson you are going to learn how to create voice enable application using aws poly Till now we have performed multiple NLP tasks like translate, sentiment analysis, part of speech, detected entities, then transcribe which converts your speech into text. And here we're going to learn that how you can create voice enabled application using AWS Poly. It is an awesome services which is offered by AWS which converts your text into speech. Just like transcribe which converts speech into text, it is just a reciprocal of transcribe service. It converts your text into a speech. Here it uses deep learning technology to synthesize your natural human speech. And with the proper combination of AWS transcribe and AWS poly, you can even create applications like Siri, Alexa or Cortana. So here we're going to create a simple Python script which we're going to perform a simple text-to-speech functionality, okay? So here you need to import go to 3 library uh, which is a Python SDK for AWS for managing the AWS services and here let me create a simple function which we're going to call from our main application and let me add some tab here, okay? So here I have created a simple instance for poly you can see and here you need to use this parameter and uh, this function which is synthesize speech and here you need to give the text and the output format like it can be mp3 it can be any other music format okay so here I'm going to give this mp3 format Okay, it is a popular one that's why I'm using it here and uh, here you need to also provide the voice ID here there are multiple languages which is supported by AWS Poly as my mission is to convert my English literals into speech that's why I'm using this Joanna voice ID or you can even use Matthew uh, in my previous lesson when I was describing about AWS transcribe I created the audio content using this poly 
with the help of Matthew okay so here I'm using this Joanna it is a female version okay which will going to synthesize your text into speech format your your human speech format okay so here once it will going to call this particular function and where you put in down this parameters then it will going to write a file for you here I'm going to create a simple output.mp3 okay so it will going to give all other things up there and it will going to create a uh, this output.mp3 file okay the output for this job okay and here you need to pass some strings here so here I have written hello my name is Joanna and uh, you need to call this function just simply write t dot sorry t underscore two underscore s and you need to put this text here okay only one parameter I'm passing through this function okay now let me run this particular python script and uh, okay we got some error so it says that poly object has no attribute synthesis speech okay so uh okay we got that error thus i have written a incorrect function for this poly it will be a synthesize okay not synthesis okay so you need to simply uh, replace the synthesis with synthesize not this will going to work for us okay and uh, let me remove this error simply you need to press escape now okay it is not removing let me try one more time okay this error removed okay so now here i have changed the spell as well the spelling from synthesis to synthesize now let me run this python script again and hope that this time will, will not prompt any kind of error okay Hello, my name is Joanna. 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 So it is working fine. You can see the the text which we have passed through that Python script. It actually converted into output dot mp3. So here I'm going to change the string to Pranjal. I know this Pranjal is a not a female name it's my name which is male here but okay for a trial i'm just putting this name here pranjal and uh, it has generated uh output of mp3 hello my name is pranjal let me play it again hello my name is pranjal so it is working fine you can see that's all in the next lesson we're going to add this particular function into our main application that's all keep learning stay motivated hi there welcome back friend in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create a simple python script through which you can convert your text into human voice and i have used that joanna voice you can even use another language another voice okay it's up to you now here i'm going to put some of the things into my main application here you need to call this particular function t underscore two underscore s so that whatever text which you are going to pass through our main application it will going to convert your text into the speech okay so here i have added that particular function now i have i have to import the file name as well the python script which we have created and you need to also pass this particular thing okay through this render template function okay and uh, yeah one more point i want to add here is with the help of poly you you even create applications like siri alexa or Caratana, but also you can create uh, awesome applications like pocket app which i have recently used through which you will be able to hear the articles from that particular app okay you need to you can you have the option to bookmark all the articles which you want to read or you which you want to hear okay and with the help of poly you can 
um, create a conversational chatbot voice enable chatbot uh, with the you can integrate it with uh, aws lex and create our amazing chatbot where you're going to enter some text there and in return we're going to response into the speech okay or you can also create the virtual call center as well like you if you have any kind of complaint you call okay and you call the customer call center and what happened is like you have given the input into the form of speech then speech is converted into the text with the help of aws transcribe and then the help of text you do some kind of analysis you do some keyword extractions or things like that and in, in, in response you are getting some text and now the thing is with the help of aws poly you you are not converting your text into the form of speech which you are getting in the form of output so this is how you can create the virtual call center as well with the help of aws poly and aws transcribe okay and you can integrate this poly with another aw services to create astonishing application okay so here i'm just creating a simple application to show you that how it actually work okay so let me pass some text here and uh, i'm going to submit and it will going to take a time because here it will going to uh, convert your text into speech as well as we're going to analyze other nlp task as well okay we got all of the outputs here let me check it out the output.mp3 s s okay and the output is not up to the mark through which which uh, which we thought okay the reason behind it that we have passed the language okay so it selected the language which is s which is es the short form for spanish okay so you need to uh, change the variable from lang to the input okay the you, you are actually converting your text into speech not language here now i have given this input variable here let's hope that it will going to work fine this time so here hello pranjal thanks for your patience and uh, let's see that this will going to work fine or not so we got the all of the results of nlp task now let us check this output out mb3 hello pranjal thanks for your patience so it is working fine okay so in the, the next lesson i'm going to put this audio thing into our web application so till then keep learning keep exploring hi there welcome back friend in my previous lesson i have shown you that how you can create the poly function through which you will be able to convert your text into the speech into the human voice okay then we have added that function into our main application through which we are able to pass some text to our front end and in the result we have got the output.mp3 now here our task is to do some changes into our front end which is index.html so here i'm going to use the audio tag so that uh, the audio which is created after the conversion from the text will be display into our front end okay so so here i'm going to put some changes like uh, till now that whatever audio is converted it is saved into my uh, local disk okay my local drive now the thing is like whatever thing is converted it will be go to that s3 bucket okay that particular audio will going to be a uh, transfer that particular audio file going to be uploaded into my s3 bucket and from there it will going to call that object and we're going to able to hear that voice into our front end okay so i have made some changes here you can see i have added this upload thing here now you may be asked like we already have the upload function but still i have created one because it will create a, a simple for us because uh, like using that upload function it, it that particular function i have created for some other task that it, it does the upload thing but it is not suitable right there so that's why i have added this upload thing here once again into this poly.py 
now uh, once our file is uploaded to the bucket which is sample 07 and the name of my file I'm going to keep it as the same which is output.mp3 and uh, okay and it will go with it will be uploaded into our s3 bucket and then it will going to call that object with the url which i have provided inside that audio tag okay now let us see that it is working fine or not i have done the changes and uh, let's hope that it will going to work fine so just write hello crandall thanks for your patience and wait for a while Hello Pranjal, thanks for your patience. So it is working fine, okay. So I have written down the text and it performed other NLP tasks as well as it also added the voice into our application, okay. So we did our job very well and uh, I have performed multiple NLP tasks as well. Now in case if you want to do some changes, uh, you can do as well okay so let me open the output.mp3 file which is stored into my local drive as well hello Pranjal thanks for your patience so it is working fine here as well so this is how I have created simple uh, NLP machine learning project where I have added multiple NLP tasks and you can even create an awesome application with the help of this NLP task. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated.